Hey everyone, Paul Mann here. Welcome back to my Python videos. In this video, we're going to connect a Raspberry Pi to a motion sensor and write some Python code to detect motion and send alerts to anywhere in the world. So this can be really useful and it gives us an opportunity to work with the interface on the Raspberry Pi and control it with our Python code. So for example, if you wanted to monitor the motion in your living room, uh, you could put the Raspberry Pi in the motion detector there. And then while you're out and about town, if someone enters the room, the motion detector will trigger and the Python script on the Raspberry Pi will send you an alert to your phone informing you that someone was in the room. Before we get started, we need some hardware to make this work. Um, we need the Raspberry Pi, first of all. We also need a motion sensor, and these are on Amazon for about $2 each, or a pack of five for eight, or last, that's the last time I checked. And because the pins on the motion sensor and on the Raspberry Pi are mail, you'll need a cable to connect. This is a set of cables here, something similar to this, and I'll leave the links to the motion sensor and the cables below in the comments. To connect the Raspberry Pi to the motion sensor, we need to connect certain pins. I'm probably over explaining this, but if you're completely new to this process, this will help you. So on the top, I marked in red where the five volt power pin is. This is important because if the, if the sensor that you purchased is three volts, then you will fry it if you connect it to this. So look at the specs on your sensor. If it's three, connect it to the left pin. If it's five, connect it to the right pin. So you need the output cable. In my case, I selected the GPIO21, which is the 40th pin, and then the ground. So the three cables come out of the sensor and connect to those areas on the Raspberry Pi. This is the configuration I used. This Raspberry Pi is a Series 3B+, plus, but I did also try it on the 4, and it, it did work. The pinout in the last slide I used for all Raspberry Pis that I tested on here and they all work the same. So normally we do our coding in PyCharm, but it really doesn't make sense for this project. So we're going to just log into the Raspberry Pi with a regular user, the Pi user, and I'll create a directory called sensor, and we'll put the code in there. So we'll create a file called sensor.py or whatever you want yourself. And in here, we're going to paste the code to run the Raspberry Pi. So this is all the code you need. Um, it, you import the GPIO, which comes with the Python on the Raspberry Pi. We pick the pin 21. There's a simple function that's called when motion is detected, and you can exit out the loop with a keyboard um, quit command. To run this program, you simply type Python and the name of the file you created. And there's the ready sign, so the motion, the motion sensor is listening. It does take, there is motion in this room. I have it connected right here in front of me, but it does take a little time for the motion detector to fire off the first alert. But there it is, prints to the screen, it's motion detected. So our motion detector is working correctly and it's printing to the screen. So now let's do something a little more interesting. We'll go back to the file that we created, sensor.py, and now we're going to add a function to send an email. So this is a simple call to Google Mail, is, Gmail is what I'm using, and I recommend A, that you use that. It's simple. It does work with Yahoo Mail as well, but this seems to be easier. And B, use an email that you're not using for your daily use. So create an email for this purpose, and I'll explain why in a second. So these are just the basic commands to connect to Gmail with the port um, and the login. So you would obviously fill in your login information and your password. And then the from email will be that email and the to email will be wherever you're sending the alert to. If you are using Gmail, you will have to go into your account and click the less secure app access button to on. And this is why I suggest for this purpose, you create a separate email rather than your own account. So you are reducing the security and you need to do that because there is an external app connecting to your email account and that external app is this Python code. So once you set that and put the settings in your username and password in the code, you should be able to receive alerts when there's motion detected. 
So once we update this code, we run our program again from the command prompt with the Python followed by the name of the file. So we still have motion detected printing to the screen, but we also send an email now and you can see on my iPhone here where I get notifications saying that there's motion detected. So this is all well and good, but the problem is that this is a session inside of a terminal. So once I shut down my computer here, this will stop. So we need to set it up as a process on the Raspberry Pi. And the way we do that is go into the following directory, the systemd system, and we'll create a file called motion detect.service. You can name it anything you like, just make sure the extension is .service. So this is a file that runs in the systemd and will be running in the background. You use the settings that I have here. You may need to change the exec start line to the name of the file that you create, but everything else should be the same. So once you create this file, you save it in that systemd system directory. Now we just need to run the daemon reload command and you'll need sudo privileges to do this. What this will do in effect is initiate the service that we just created and make it active. Now if we run systemctl status on our new process that we created, we should see that it's running. And if you do system enable motion, detect motion dot service, it'll load the service every time the system reboots. So that's all you need to know to connect a motion detector to a Raspberry Pi and control it with Python. The code is on GitHub. The link is in the comments below. It's also below here on the screen. The links are also provided to the sensor and to the cable. I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe learned a little something. If you have, please don't forget to share and like. Thanks for watching. See you soon.